ABC News political contributor Sarah Isker, former Trump administration official, for just more perspective on all of this. So, Sarah, we saw those outtakes from Trump's remarks on January 7th showing that he didn't want to say that the election was over. It was clear. He was getting frustrated. So what did you make of that? Yeah, I mean, there were many more shocking things that we learned. We've been waiting for the draft, those outtakes, really since they first subpoenaed the National Archives. Donald Trump, of course, tried to block those, claiming executive privilege. A court ruled that the committee was going to get access to those tapes. So we've known from the beginning that these tapes were going to show something that perhaps the president didn't want out there publicly. And now we see it. It was that he didn't want to say the election is over. Now, of course, what the committee has been so uh, productive at, I think, is making that political case against the president, what would be impeachment level charges under the Constitution. Uh, this, however, does not go to the legal case against the president that the Department of Justice appears to be pursuing really on that fake elector side. We know that they've subpoenaed or searched about 15 people close to the president looking at what they knew, what they said around submitting that fake slate of electors to the National Archives and to Congress. So the January 6th committee, again, making forceful arguments on that political case, uh, why he shouldn't be president again, for instance. But the legal case continues in the Department of Justice, and I think we'll see more from that in the future as well. Well, that's going to be interesting to follow for sure, uh, especially if they pursue criminal charges. Well, the House GOP called witness Sarah Matthews, who we saw testify just another liar and pawn in Pelosi's witch hunt. And now it's a since deleted tweet. Should the party be attacking witnesses credibility on Trump's behalf? Uh, they had a few tweets that they had to delete last night. They also said this whole thing is heresy. Unclear whether they knew that heresy and hearsay are different, whether it was a typo. Uh, and then, yes, as you said, they attacked one of the witnesses who actually works for them. Uh, they deleted that tweet as well. Important if you're going to troll to check whether someone works on staff and do a spell check, things like that, as it turns out. Uh, the the thing that the committee has talked about, about witness intimidation uh, coming from people close to Mark Meadows or Donald Trump, is something that I expect them to explore more when they come back in September. Uh, you know, certainly the House GOP Twitter feed, uh, not necessarily trying to intimidate witnesses, but it does show uh, the the pushback that these witnesses get. They're leaving their careers on the line in many cases, leaving uh, you know decades in Republican politics to tell the truth to the American people. So pushing this forward, you know, the split between Trump and Pence is already playing out on the campaign trail. Both are reportedly considering running for president in 2024. How do you see this playing out? Well, Mike Pence taking an interesting tact here. They'll be in Arizona at the same time with their different Senate candidates that they've endorsed. And then they'll both be in D.C. Donald Trump for his first speech since uh, leaving Washington, D.C. And Mike Pence speaking to the Heritage Foundation. Uh, you know, Mike Pence, on the one hand, trying to draw that contrast with Donald Trump. He spoke to House Republicans this week. We're told he got a standing ovation that he was thanked for his courage on January 6th. But Mike Pence himself has actually not talked often about what happened on January 6th. He said, of course, it's not up to any single American to decide the outcome of election, that that would be un-American. Uh, but, you know, Mike Pence not polling anywhere near the top of the heat for 2024 compared to someone like Ron DeSantis. I wonder whether Mike Pence would have a more productive role on the Republican side of getting people together in that room and saying only one person can run against Donald Trump if we want him not to be back in the White House in 2024. It's going to be an interesting couple of years. Sarah, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.